We're gonna be talking about bourbon and bites today. We're in downtown Albany, and of course Albany is the seat of government, capital of New York State, with a juicy history full of politicians, bootleggers, gangsters, prohibition era drama. So I think we've come to the right place to get a drink. So in fact, we've come today to the Bishop of Bourbon and Beef Bar in Albany, and we're gonna go in and talk to Matthew Tedford, who's gonna give us some pro tips on making classic bourbon cocktails at home. So let's go in. talking to Matthew Tedford, the bartender today, because he is probably the expert that we really need to speak to. We're going to be talking about bourbon cocktails. And so, first of all, Matthew, I want you to tell us very simply, what is bourbon? So, um, bourbon is a grain-based distillate. Um, if I could simplify bourbon into four words, it's grains, water, wood, and time. Um, I could get into the ABCs of bourbon. A, it's American made. Uh, B, barrel, it's gotta be uh, aged in a white oak, new charred barrel. C, corn, it's gotta be 51% corn. D, distillation proof, has to be 160 proof or 80% alcohol. Uh, e, entry proof, has to go into the barrel at 125 proof or less. Um, F, fill proof, which it has to go into the bottle at 80 proof or higher. In G genuine, you can't add anything to it. All the flavor has to come from the grains and the wood in the barrel. And how does bourbon differ from rye? Because rye is also super popular, and some of the cocktails we're going to talk about historically used rye, um, but now um, more often than not, you know, we're using bourbon as the base. So, what's the difference between bourbon and rye? So, really, the only difference between bourbon and rye is rye has to be fifty-one percent rye instead of corn. Um, most of the bourbons have a rye component to them. In fact, pretty much all of them do. Um, and while bourbon is going to be sweet, caramel, vanilla from the corn, rye is going to be a little bit spicier, a little bit fruitier. You get some lemon notes out of the rye as well. Before we do anything, I want to have, I want to put you on the spot. I'm going to give you the bartender quiz because when people are rummaging in their drinks cabinets and they say, I know I have a bottle of bourbon in here somewhere, um, how are they going to be able to identify it? So first of all, what is straight bourbon? So a straight bourbon has to be aged two years. Um, your mass produced bourbons are going to be four to six years. And then some of your more select bourbons are going to be seven to 10. And then after that, it gets very expensive. Okay. What about Kentucky straight bourbon? So it needs to be made in the state of Kentucky, which is the birthplace in frankly the home. And how about small batch? So small batch is um, is made from a smaller number of barrels. There's no set limit. Um, it could be 17 to 100 barrels where you're mass produced. You can go up into the thousands of barrels where they're combining to, to create consistency basically. So the smaller batch is gonna have more nuances to them. Okay. And that in comparison to single barrel. And then single barrel, you're taking it a step further where you're only bottling from a single barrel. Harder to, to control the consistency, but again, you're going to have um, what's known as honey barrels or what Blanton's is made from, where it's going to be a better bourbon. So, can you settle an argument? What is the origin of the bourbon name? So, the bourbon name, there's actually no right answer. Um, there's lore that Elijah Craig, a pastor from um, Kentucky, used old fish barrels. And to get rid of the, to store his um, moonshine, basically, and to get rid of that fish taste, he charred the inside of the barrel. And that's where bourbon came from. The other, the other um, 
rumor or the other uh, origin, I would say, is um, shipping the moonshine down to um, Bourbon Street in New Orleans is another uh, way that it may have gotten its name. Okay, so we just don't really know. So that's not settled. It, it is not settled, no. I'm going to let you tell us what we're going to make today and give us some tips on two classic cocktails um, based around bourbon. Sure. So today we're going to make a, a bourbon old fashioned in a rye Manhattan. So I'm going to start with the old fashioned and um, today I'm using Knob Creek. I like Knob Creek because it's a higher proof. So the sweetness from the sugar is really going to offset that high proof. And you're going to start with uh, two ounces of bourbon, a half an ounce of simple syrup. And simple syrup is just a one-to-one -one, um, concoction of sugar and water, bring it to a boil and then let it cool. I'm using two dashes of aromatic bitters. And then seven dashes of orange bitters. I like to use orange bitters here because I'm going to be garnishing it with an orange. So they pair nicely together. Basically, you're going to add your ice. And then stir for about 20 seconds. The great thing about an old fashioned is, as you can see, it's pretty easy to make. And you can also control the sweetness by how much sugar you add. Um, if, you, if you don't want to make simple syrup, you can use a sugar cube and then put your bitters right on top of the sugar cube and then mash it with a spoon. At the Bishop, we use a big rock, a big ice cube. And then strain over the ice. And then you're going to take your orange, and this will really set the drink apart if you're having people over. Just get the rind and spritz it. Go around the glass, put it in. And you can add the cherry in, but I like to put it on top. And that's an old fashioned. Perfect. It looks delicious. Now, my understanding is that this is one of the oldest cocktails, the old fashioned. So the original cocktail, which from the old west originated from this before they had ice, it was just bourbon and a sweetener and bitters. And then they would add water. Okay, perfect. So in a variation, because they're not too far apart, the next cocktail that you're going to make Sure. So the next cocktail I'm going to make is in Manhattan, which is basically a bourbon martini. So today for, for our man, Manhattan, I'm going to use a rye. Um, I like the rye because it's a little fruitier and the sweet vermouth, I think it pairs better a Manhattan with a rye. So the first thing you want to do if you want to be extra fancy is chill your coupe or your martini glass. And then you're going to take, again, two ounces of whiskey or rye, one ounce of sweet vermouth, and then I like to do two or three dashes of aromatic bitters. You're going to add your ice. And stir again for 15 to 20 seconds. Is that to release the flavors? Or? It's just to chill it down. Chill it. Okay. You don't want to you try not to shake it because that's going to break up tiny ice particles into the drink. If you do shake it, you can double strain it through like a finer strainer. Mm -hmm. um, it's also said that the Manhattan kind of saved the uh, bourbon industry. Uh, Jimmy Russell. And Booker No used to go around to the big, big markets, New York City, Los Angeles, and teach the younger bartenders how to make a bourbon martini. And that's kind of how it took off. And 
this garnish, if you want to make it fancy, kind of like a martini instead of olives, you're going to do three cherries. Okay, Matthew, so let's just assume that uh, we've made our, or we're making our cocktails at home. What would your recommendation be, first of all, if someone doesn't have anything in the cabinet? What would you suggest if they're going out to the store and they don't want to overthink it? What's a good middle of the road bourbon? Sure, so um, the three middle of the road, um, you're not gonna break the bank bourbons. Um, that I would definitely suggest is uh, Wild Turkey 101. That's kind of like what bourbon should be. It's gonna pack a punch, but it's still gonna finish very smoothly. If you wanna go a little softer, you can go with like a Woodford's Reserve which is going to be a little bit smoother, a little bit lesser proof, maybe kind of almost like an entry level bourbon. And then of course, Old Forester, I would definitely recommend. Legend has it, it's the oldest bourbon in America. So I got to put Old Forester in there. Okay, even older than the Elijah Craig? It is, yes. Rumor has it, there's no proof, but it's said that um, uh, Old Forester is the oldest. Well, so now we've made the cocktails. Um, your guests are happy drinking their Manhattan or their old fashioned, but you want to pair it with food. And one of the beautiful things about bourbon cocktails, of course, is that you can treat it like beer or wine when you're serving different courses. Um, it's not quite as intense, perhaps, as drinking it neat, although that's something, obviously, that uh, as you become you know, more familiar with the nuances you might want to sort of move on to. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the pairings. And we looked over, obviously, the menu here. Everything on the menu here will pair with bourbon. But I was singling out a couple of things because I do um, tastings and pairings sometimes. Um, and you really want to allow the flavors, the nuances to come out. And what I usually find is that it's things like cheese, and it's surprising because you can do, just like you can do a wine and cheese pairing, you can do a bourbon and cheese pairing, but there's something about the fats um, allow you, it almost um, modifies the burn factor of the alcohol, but then also brings out the different flavors. And there's so many uh, initial flavors and then the lingering flavors, you might get some custard or cherry or fruit flavors on top of the, you know, caramel, vanilla, all of those sweet flavors. So we picked out a couple of things, didn't we? And here we've chosen to have the Bishop Smash Burger, which I understand is um, Angus beef. This is juicy and fatty and pretty much any, you know, bacon, think of maple, maple bacon, those sorts of things are going to pair really well with the cocktails. So using um, a beautiful burger like that with fries, um, or since cheese pairs so well, having something like the burrata there, and that's with sautéed wild mushrooms, uh, the chef was just telling us, um, with the Tribeca bread. But I mean, this is the type of thing that you could make at home or that you can come out here to the Bishop. This is obviously one of the signature items, the smash burger. Um, and I think everybody would be happy to have a bourbon cocktail, a good hearty meal like this, or maybe a cheese board, or something like that. All right, so this looks beautiful, but if you were at home, what would be your go-to drink? So my go-to drink at home is a Manhattan. Um, I use wild turkey, a little bit less vermouth, but that's the great part about these. You can customize them the way you like them. People ask me, uh, what's the best way to make a, a Manhattan? It's the way you like it. Oh, that's great advice. Even though we've just shown them how a pro makes it. Great. Obviously, you know, we've talked a little bit about the foods that can pair well and why. But if people want to come here and eat this, um, currently it's recommended that they have a reservation. That's right. Um, due to COVID restrictions, and because we're a little bit smaller, more intimate restaurant, we're at 50%, we get kind of jam-packed in here. It's recommended that you make a reservation. We, we offer 20% off when you do make a reservation. That's off the entire bill. And we're still doing takeout. Okay, well, that's definitely good to know. Let's, I very much hope there isn't another shutdown, but just in case, so there's uh, food to go. And thank you again. Thank you so much for talking to us about bourbon, for making these beautiful bourbon cocktails. And I'm very much looking forward to trying them. So appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.